research is based on the science of dwelling in architecture. So I'm a philosopher and my references are related to the contemporary phenomenology from Gaston Bachelard and Merleau-Ponty, uh, but also with, uh, are related with the, the, the contemporary lectures of the phenomenology in architecture uh, by Stephen Hall, uh, Juani Palasma, Peter Zumtor. So uh, my uh, primary um, interest in this moment is to uh, underline the scenes of the dwelling, so an aesthetics of dwelling uh, in uh, the architecture, so in the urban architectures, but also, of course, uh, in the interior architecture. And today I would to present a lecture uh, about uh, uh, Le Corbusier and the scenes of the unspeakable space in Le Corbusier. And uh, as subtitle, I wrote Catharsis, Aesthetics and Atmosphere, because I think that Le Corbusier is one of uh, uh, the, um, the most representative architect in the modernism uh, that, uh, uh, that creates a relationship between architecture and uh, a poetic site of the human space and the experience in the space. Um, the prologue, so the, the intro of my lecture is about uh, the talk with the students by Le Corbusier that he made uh, in 1943, but we have some English uh, translation. For example, we have this wonderful book of 1999, Talks with Students. And uh, in the intro of this uh, entretien, so in this uh, uh, talking, with uh, the architectural students, Le Corbusier said, I discovered architecture related to its natural site. And if we, we want to talk about uh, the scenes uh, of the sacral in the architecture of Le Corbusier, I think that uh, we, must, uh, um, uh, we must underline the importance uh, of the relationship with uh, the natural landscape for Le Corbusier. And we will see how in, this, in his experience is so much important this relationship with the, the landscape, like uh, a space that surrounds him. Uh, so, text, uh, uh, the, the quote by Le Corbusier are very, very interesting because uh, uh, he introduces some uh, words like uh, the dwelling, uh, the shelter, the possession, uh, but also the perception. And uh, uh, in this quote, uh, he wrote, architecture is a mission demanding dedication of its servants, dedication to dwelling. For a dwelling shelters work, possessions, institutions, and uh, the thoughts of men as well. Architecture is an act of love. And I think that is a wonderful quotation by Le Corbusier because underlines the love that uh, Le Corbusier feel for the architecture. And for him, the architecture represents an act of love, some that uh, he, um, he give to the humans, so uh, to the population, for example, or to a community. And uh, for Le Corbusier, I think, I think that the, the architecture is uh, something of a gift, uh, is, a, is a gift that he gives uh, to the community. Uh, and he wrote in this text, reveal it to you, you can conquer them, the master you serve, with your plants and your drafts, sees everything, his eyes behind their brilliant surface are endowed with perception, intelligence, and heart. So the perception, the intelligence, and the heart are the three elements from that Le Corbusier 
build the architecture and makes the architecture too. So uh, the first point of this lecture is about the catharsis. And the catharsis is, uh, uh, you know, from uh, the Greek etym etymology, um, the sense of catharsis is a purification, but also a, sublim a sublimation of our feelings, uh, for example, in a space or in uh, something that happens. And uh, uh, he wrote, to take pos possession of space is the first gesture of the living. And uh, uh, you are reading about the like Bézier text, he often write about uh, the, the, the living sensation, the inhabiting sensation, and the dwelling sensation, like an experience sensation. Um, he wrote, man and beast, plants and clouds, the fundamental manifestation of equilibrium and permanence. The first proof of existence is to occupy space. And it seems to read a philosopher for me when I read the text from Le Corbusier, because he writes about all the, the meaning of what happens around, uh, for example, a project or, uh, uh, you know, uh, a building or a home or a surrounding space. And um, the, the Voyage d'Orient, so the, the, the trip uh, in the East for Le Corbusier was a catharsis, a sublimation, because it, it, was, uh, it represents the first meeting that he had with the architecture. And uh, in the beginning of uh, uh, this carnet about uh, his experience in the East, he wrote and I read before in French and after in English, l'architecture me fut révélée, l'architecture est le jeu magnifique des formes sous la lumière. L'architecture a un système cohérent de l'esprit. Ar arch architecture was relevant to me. Architecture is the magnificent play of forms under the light. Architecture is a coherent system of the soul. And as you know, uh, Carl Gustav Jung, when he introduced the structure of the soul, often he used the image of the home, for example. He says that the three stadium of the soul, the, the ego, the S, and the super S, are related to the three floor of a home. So as the same, um, Le Corbusier wrote architecture is a coherent system of the soul. So the architecture, this, um, this conception of the building of the construction is related to the construction of a coherent, coherent system of the soul. And uh, uh, in this trip, Le Corbusier visit the Monte Athos, so the Mount of Athos in Greece, and uh, uh, the visits to the monastery of Mount Athos in Greece and to the Carter House of Emma in Florence are decisive for Le Corbusier's study on the existence of, on the, the ex existence, sorry, of spiritual speculation. Both complex are the ideal organization of the community, common spaces for service and social life and isolated intimate lodgings, each equipped with a garden open to the valley. So in this space, we have space for community. And at the same time, in the other hand, we had the space for the intimacy and uh, for lodging. In particular, the sacred mountain Athos has a deep impact on the architect's future choices on the interior layouts regarding the concept of concentration understood as a modus vivendi. So uh, Le Corbusier bring from his experience to the trip in the East 
this modus vivendi for a community. And this is a main concept for describe the, the choice that he made with uh, uh, the community, for example, of Saint Marie La Tourette, but we will see uh, now. In this picture, you can see uh, Le Corbusier with Father, Father Couturier. Uh, that was a uh, um, very important person in uh, the 19th century um, in France because it, it's, uh, it was a uh, um, it was a um, uh, it, it was a uh, um, um, I don't know if I if I can uh, in English uh, I don't remember the, the term but uh, uh, it was a religious man and uh, uh, he made some uh, uh, some support for the Le Corbusier architecture in the, uh, the sacral architecture and for Le Corbusier the church is the home of man par excellence, especially for its spiritual and structural elevation. In fact, he formed a very strong bond with Father Couturier, one of the men who, in the mid-20th century, provoked the revival of sacred art in France. Every man, according to the architect, is the bearer of a religious sense through which he gives meaning to the universe. Everything in the church as well as in the place dedicated to religion brings harmony from light to colors. The space becomes secreted because it is separated from any other kind of space. Different above all because of a particular chromaticity that is not used in every everyday environment. So, this is very important that uh, Le Corbusier meets Father Couturier, uh, that it, it is a, a representation of uh, what uh, happened in France in the, the mid of 19th century about the sacral architecture. But also we have another meaning in this, uh, um, you know, in this engagement with uh, the uh, sacral architecture. And this is the word uh, liturgy, liturgia, that literally means action for the people. So uh, when we talk about uh, the engagement, uh, the involvement of Le Corbusier in the sacral architecture, it's very important to remember uh, the, the scenes of the community, uh, very democratic scenes, uh, for the action for the people. In the longer research carried out by Le Corbusier on man and community life, the concept of the church, so the church as a building, is introduced as a real prolongement de l'habitat. The theme of the sacred is repeatedly questioned due to the absolute lack of religious life. But this, this does not release him from a strong attachment to essential spirituality. For Le Corbusier, the church is the house of man par excellence, above all, of its spiritual and structural elevation. And we, are, we have a picture from Saint Marie de la Tourette that was built from 1953 and 1960. Uh, the concept of La Tourette is highly innovative, despite the memory of the encounters with all the architecture of the past. First, there is the invention of the relationship with the sloping ground, okay? The building starts from the horizontal line of the roof and touches the ground as it can on pilotis that are here. The church's only volume which closes the quadrilateral to the north, seems to emerge from the ground. The shells are thus placed at the top, so to have a visual relationship with the more distant external landscape. And this is very interesting because, uh, uh, as we said before in the introduction, 
the, this strong relationship with the landscape uh, is very present in Saint Marie de la Tourette for the ground, for example, but also the view, the site that uh, the monarch have in the cells. So uh, this is a picture from uh, one of the room in Saint Marie de la Tourette. The three sites destined to community life, including cells, library, refectories, parlors, classroom, form a shaped block made of full and empty space, while the volume of the church, slightly detached, appears as an impenetrable block, which is flanked by the crypt, which recalls a sort of bastion. And this is another picture from, uh, uh, from the 60s of the cells. And this is how today is a cell in Saint Marie de la Tourette. This is a, a picture from the ground from 60s with uh, a sort of procession in the, in, the, in the floor of the ground. And this is a, a picture from the refectory. The space of common life, refectory, chapter, parlor, library and oratory are characterized by greater transparency. And we have some windows with the possibility of visual connection between the space enclosed by the convent and the one outside it. So the second point of my lecture uh, after this question of catharsis, like a sublimation. So we saw how the architecture, how the Le Corbusier architecture in Saint Marie de la Tourette can represent uh, uh, the catharsis since the liturgia since. Uh, the aesthetics approach are related um, to two points very important. And I, um, I take a picture from this review. This is a great review, is a contemporary review uh, that is Le, Le Corbusier Review de Recherche sur Le Corbusier. And in this review, uh, I published um, a paper about the aesthetics of architecture in Le Corbusier from sensory knowledge to design. And for me, it's very important to underline uh, the sense of the aesthetic contrib contribution, like a philosophical aesthetic contrib contribution that Le Corbusier represents through his architecture. Um, and uh, I think I, I find some elements uh, in the, com the Couvent de Saint-Marie de la Tourette and also in the Cabanon, because I find some elements that represent the architecture like uh, a space uh, that we feel, that we can feel. And the, the two aesthetic concepts that I use uh, are the one, the first is the concept of inhabiting, uh, inhabiting like a life experience. And uh, I underline the etym etymology um, knowledge. So from the Latin, abere, to have, to possess, to feel. So a sense of inhabiting that is uh, related uh, to something of very anthropological structure. And the second point, the second point from the, the philosophical context is according to Plato, because I find in a dialogue from Philebus, um, the dialogue um, that represents the importance of the memory retention. So how the memory can give us the example of the senses and this uh, uh, symbiosis with our soul. And uh, in, this, uh, in this dialogue, Socrates and Protarchus uh, um, talk about the importance of the perception. So there is something that is related to phenomenology when we talk about perception. But this perception is the base for the memory. So our memory collective memory, our historical memory is related to 
our subjective perception. And from this dialogue, uh, we can find the importance of the inhabited space and the sensation, the memory of these experience in the living space. And the sensitive memory provides the means for developing on the current role of symbolism and phenomenology in the domain of interior architecture, thus generating the concept of poetic nature. So every element of this lecture is related because the sensitive memory also is related to the sense of inhabiting a space. And for the um, last point, that is the atmosphere, I, I wrote uh, the, um, this, um, um, this head voice from Tonino Griffero, that is an Italian philosopher, that introduced the concept of the atmosphere in the contemporary uh, philosophy uh, with uh, some reference like uh, uh, Gernot Bohm or Hermann Schmidt, so from the uh, context of the neo phenomenology. And uh, also, the atmosphere, the sense of the atmosphere is related to our perception, but also is related to uh, something like Stimmung, genius loci, so la, to something that is related to our sensation of a space or an inhabited space. And uh, all this context of the experience in the space, uh, I think that is related, is strongly related to uh, a conception of an ex existentialism, uh, theoretical existentialism from Martin Heidegger. So Martin Heidegger, when in the 50s wrote uh, um, dwelling, thinking, and building. He wants to underline that uh, when the architect uh, projects something, uh, before they must learn to inhabiting the space, the dwelling, the sense of the dwelling is related, is strongly related to the building senses. And uh, in the contemporary era, we have some example, for example, from uh, uh, Stephen Hall or Christian Norberg Schulz or Peter Zumthor that underline this uh, primary uh, presence of the phenomenology in architecture. Uh, the architecture can be related to our approach to phenomenological space thanks to the main concept of genius Lashi, or of course introduced by Christian Norberg Schulz as a key to initial phenomenological approach to the built space. The phenomenological tradition can be translated into the contemporary architecture theories of Juani Palasma, Stephen Hall, Alberto Perez Gomez and Peter Zumthor. Modern architecture provides several examples of this type of approach. Here, we should focus on one of the most important approach, that of Le Corbusier, because I think that Le Corbusier is the first one that understand this question of phenomenology in architecture, but he doesn't theorize it, but also, he make it possible to do some phenomenology in architecture. And in conclusion, uh, towards aesthetics, atmosphere in, in Le Corbusier architecture, here we have another picture from Saint-Marie de la Tourette, that is the interior. Uh, the church, a space for recollection, is the place where we can find all the forms of intimate immensity and as you know of course the intimate immensity is a, a main concept introduced also by Gaston Bachelard in the Poetics of Space. Le Corbusier uses two elements to underline the essentiality of his project, light and color. When a work achieves the maximum intensity, proportion, quality of execution, perfection, 
a phenomenon of unspeakable space is produced the place radiate physically. They determine what they call unspeakable space. That is a shock that does not depend on dimension, but on the quality of perfection. It belongs to the realm of the elusive. So the meaning, the strong meaning of the unspeakable space is related, of course, to some of phenomenological, some of that happens in the space. And uh, I, I, I would introduce also another architecture from Le Corbusier that is the Cabanon. And uh, uh, when he, uh, he built the Cabanon for his wife, Le Corbusier wrote, the happy man is the man who performs all the act of his domestic life, where he sleeps, where he studies, where he receives his friends in 50 square meters. And uh, the harmony of the colors and the sensation of the landscape outside in which we find this nest as repeated and encoded in the over overlapping boundaries of the interior. On contemplating the Mediterranean, because the, the Cabanon is built in Cap d'Antibes, so near Nice in French, near the sea, landscape that protects and envelops like the meaning of the Cora, the Cabanon, the onlooker, perceives the phenomena of complex composition that are reconnected to the solution defined by Le Corbusier. And the spirit and the knowledge of simple everyday gestures are the products of the initial sensible perception. In Le Corbusier examples, we can find a strong specialism, existentialism, with space acquiring its absolute poetic nature. Moreover, worthy of mention is the role played by the characteristics of a sensitive memory in interpreting the architecture. So we have all these elements that represent this perception of the architecture, this phenomenological aspect of the architecture, but also the special existentialism, for example, that is represented by the unity um, of measure of the modular. So the question of the sensitive memory is the base to give us this opportunity to read some aesthetic fields in the Le Corbusier architecture. And in conclusion, this is Le Corbusier uh, in uh, the Cabanon, sacred, so the synths, the synths of the sacred architecture for Le Corbusier is not only combined with the liturgical element, but with an aesthetic system based on the concept of enfilung, so like stimmung or empathy, and therefore of sensitive empathy. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.